Well, all right. I'd like the uh, congregation to kindly stand and the family can remain seated as we begin the homegoing celebration of Miss late Miss Liz Brown. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the, city, the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. Joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north in the city of the great king. For we know that all things work together for the good to those that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. And whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Well, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. He that spared not his own son, but deliver them up unto us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? If I'm persuaded, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've come today to celebrate the home going of one of the one of the best. I'm telling you, she was something special. And I think all of us, all of us would probably say she was. How many of y'all, Liz was your best friend? Raise your hand. All the people here, she was your best friend. Man, there's a lot of best friends. I don't know how she do that. But uh, welcome. We're going to have a, um, we're going to open up with a uh, musical selection. Like you just, if you don't mind, remain on your seat. Now, if you know the words, you can sing. And uh, if you don't sing too good, we need you to sing low. Yeah, we, we don't need you to sing loud. But Michelle's going to come and we're going to have an opening selection. And uh, following that opening selection, we're going to have Liz's pastor, the pastor uh, Kevin Matthews, the Shepherd's House International Christian Church. He's going to come and do the prayer of comfort. Amen? All right, Michelle. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How many know that every praise belongs to God? Amen. One thing I do remember about Liz is that she likes some good music. So put your hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Come on, yeah. Every praise belongs to our God. Hallelujah. And I know you know the words, so just join in and sing with us. Okay, come on, congregational. Come on, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one of Every praise, 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 every praise
the praises belong to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Will you give him one more ovation and bless the name of our God. Now, if that clap was for me, that would have been okay. I said, can we give the Lord praise? We didn't come to eulogize. We've come to celebrate the goodness of our God. And I need some redeemed folk to help me give God glory. Because Sister Liz is not here. She's in the grandstands of heaven, rejoicing in the God of her salvation. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We do not mourn like the world because we know our Redeemer lives. To God be the glory, you may be the seated. To the prophetic angel of this house, we give great honor and credence to Pastor Mangrum and to this great August body of believers. To all of those of you that have come from near and far, to the bereaved family, to Brother Gerald, we read you greetings today. And we just thank God that he did not leave us without the comforter. He has sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. For he said, I have overcome the world. And so we are again just giving God praise for Sister Elizabeth's life. Life is not measured by the length of time, but by the lives that one has touched. And through all that we see that is here today and those that are watching online, Sister Liz has made a tremendous impact in the lives of people. Can we give God praise for her? Or can we celebrate her on today? My prayer as I get ready to pray and take my seat is not for Brother Gerald today. My prayer for him is six months from now. A year from now when you're sitting in your kitchen and you pour a cup of coffee and when all the friends and family thinking that you have come to a better place and you yell out and call out her name and realize that she's not there that's when you're going to know the peace that surpasses our natural understanding that guards our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's when the words of Jesus, when he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, I'll be with you to the very end, will become a meaningful reality in your life. And so my prayer is for this family as well, that God of all comfort, the Father of mercy, but rest, rule, and abide. If you don't mind, join the, your neighbor by the hand as we pray today. Father, we do come to you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the one who's conquered death, hell, and the grave, the one who rose with all power and authority in his hand, the one that we as the bride of Christ await his soon return. And so, Lord, we ask now that you would comfort this family, that you would minister your peace. Your word declares that you'll keep those in perfect peace who mine who stayed upon thee. So Lord, we ask now that they will meditate upon your precious word and the peace of God would cover them. I ask, O oh God, that you would wrap your arms around them like a warm blanket on a cold one at night that they will sense and feel the warmth of your presence, that they would know the power, my God, of joy, even in the midst of sorrow and grief. And so, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise for the precious Holy Spirit that will be with them today in the weeks, the months, and the years yet ahead of this family. We ask, O oh God, now that you would cover them in Jesus' name we pray. We are comforted in our heart and spirit even though we're saddened at this moment, but we know that we shall see her again because her life was hidden in Christ Jesus. 
To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And our Savior conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so today we can rejoice because of what Christ has done. So bless this family and all the friends in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. bless you this time we're gonna have our old testament reading by reverend katrina wallace and then our new testament reading by reverend bill johnson and following that we will have another selection from michelle williams just give an honor to god for the life and the love and the legacy that sister deaconess mother, friend, grandmother, cousin, aunt. I can go on and on. The blessing that she was in our life. And I mimic what the pastor said, as you look around this room, you see the impact that she's had on many lives. And so as we come to celebrate her life and her love and her legacy, and her friendship and her support. I'll read Old Testament scripture, Isaiah 40, starting at the 28th verse. And it says, do you not know? Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary. Yes. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary yes. and increase the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord yes. will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and never faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, church. Brother Gerald, you've been a strong man. Through this whole thing, you have been an absolute strong, strong man. Yes, yes. It's so many things that I could say about you and your journey with your wife during these last few years, but you have been an extremely strong man. Your family should know and understand all that you have done and the strength that you have brought forth for the family. I love you, man. We go way back. And I know you're going to be fine because you're rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. This morning, I will be reading from 2 Corinthians, the third through the fifth chapter. And it reads, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the suffering of Christ or ours in abundance is also the comfort is abundance through Christ Jesus. Amen.
time we're going to have a poem and by one of her favorite 
none other than uh, Miss Jacinta Brown. She's going to come at this time. And she, she wants to go down there? Is she going to come do the poem? Or oh, it's an obituary? Oh, I got somebody come before her. Okay, good. We don't know who this is, but y'all know it, right? <laughs> good afternoon, family and friends. I am Cousin Jasmine Jones from Boston. <laughs> um, I'm going to be up here for a little bit because my family has commissioned me to be the reader today. And so I hope you enjoy hearing my voice because I'll be up here for about six minutes. <laughs> um, all right, I want to start off with a few letters that we received um, for our family from a couple of different churches and also some family members. All right. This first one is from the Shepherd's House International Christian Church. To Brother Gerald Brown, Sr., family and friends of Sister Elizabeth Brown, Pastor R. Kevin Matthews, First Lady Melissa Matthews, and the Shepherd's House International Christian Church family express our deepest sympathy for the passing of your beloved wife, Elizabeth Brown. It is never easy to lose a loved one, and it is especially difficult to lose a wife of 50 years. We extend our prayers to you and everyone whose lives have been touched by the life of Sister Brown. The Bible says in Isaiah 41 and 10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We rejoice knowing that Sister Brown was a God-fearing Christian who loved the Lord with all of her heart, and she has gone on to glory to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. It's Revelation 14 and 13. We believe it is important for you to know that your TSHICC family is here for you. Our hearts go out to you and your family. And while we may not be able to fill the void you have, we trust and believe that our Lord will be your wonderful source of comfort. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, fa the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Brother Brown, we are praying that God grants you grace, faith, and hope in Christ Jesus as you reflect. May the beautiful memories of your wife, Elizabeth Brown, bring you joy. In Matthew 5 and 4, the Bible says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yours in Christ, Kevin and Melissa Matthews. The next one I will read is from Colonial Baptist Church in Randallstown, Maryland. To Sister Celeste Franklin and family, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a, loving, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. It's 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4. We, the Colonial Baptist Church family, wish to express our deepest sympathy in the passing of your sister, Elizabeth Franklin Brown, who is now rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that every remembrance of your good times with her will give you great joy and comfort. The Bible says that the memory of the righteous will be a blessing, it's Proverbs 10 and 7. And we know that so many people have been blessed by the life of Sister Elizabeth. To the entire family, please know that the Colonial Baptist Church family stands ready to assist you in any way possible and will be praying for your continual love and strength in the Lord. Please know that while your hearts are broken today, that there is no pain that the Lord Jesus Christ cannot heal and fill with his hope and grace. Together, we share in the hope that we will see her again with the, when the trumpet sounds, the clouds, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, and the dead in Christ shall rise. We will meet her again. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17 says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, 
Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. In Christian love, Robert J. Anderson, Jr. Last letter um, I'll read is from Cornerstone Peaceful Baptist, Peaceful Bible Baptist Church. That's where we are right now. <laughs> For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in, in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. The Cornerstone Peaceful Bible Baptist Church, pastors and members offer our sincere condolences on the passing of your loved one and our sister in Christ, Mrs. Liz Brown. We know that losing a loved one is never easy, but God is always present and will take you through this time of grief. His mercies endureth forever. To her husband, Gerald, and all other family members and friends, Sister Liz has simply answered God's call to come to her heavenly home. She leaves a lot for you to reflect upon because God blessed her with his love and your love. As you reflect on moments you spent with her, the wisdom that she shared with you and her smiles and laughter, you'll find that she is with you in spirit. Think of God's goodness and those memories will never fade. Prayerfully submitted by the Cornerstone Peaceful Bible Baptist Church, Reverend Daniel T. Mangrum, pastor, Reverend Sabrina A. Mangrum, co-pastor, and Joyce E. Bush, church clerk. I have one more um, family reflection that I just want to share, which is short, and then I will read Aunt Liz's obituary. A message to the Brown family from Stephanie Gall, who is our cousin Errol's um, partner who passed away some years back. Dear Uncle Gerald and family, I wish I could be there. You are in my thoughts and prayers. I regret not being able to be present with you in person. Aunt Liz, from the moment we met, you treated me with such warm, warmth and kindness, making me feel like a part of your family. I feel fortunate to have known you. Rest peacefully. Your love and light will always be remembered. Sending all my love and strength to you during this difficult time with heartfelt sympathy with all my love, Stephanie. And now, the reading of Such a Life Well Lived. If you want to turn your program to the back, follow along with me. Elizabeth A. Franklin, beloved daughter of the late William and Mary Franklin, was born February 4, 1955 in Baltimore, Maryland. She went home to be with the Lord on Wednesday, March 27, 2024, at 69 years old. Elizabeth was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, alongside her sister, Celeste Franklin. While raised Catholic, she was baptized at an early age at St. Edward's Roman Catholic Church. She received her early education in parochial schools in the city where she later went on to graduate from Douglas High School in 1973 in Baltimore City. Immediately after graduation, she joined the United States Air Force active duty in 1973. After completing basic training, Liz went to tech school to become a jet engine mechanic. Due to the fumes getting her sick, the Air Force told her she had to retrain into another field, where she um, reassigned, she was reassigned and retra retrained, excuse me, to become a vehicle operator for the next three years. In December of 1973, Airman Franklin arrived at Patrick AFB, Florida, where she trained as a vehicle operator in the sub-mortar pool for the communications squadron with Sergeant Gerald L. Brown, Sr., assigned as her supervisor. <laughs> 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 Gerald taught her how to operate a manual transmission. Fun fact, once her now husband taught her, now, taught her how to drive a stick shift, she went and bought a Chevy, uh, a Chevy Chevette? A oh, Corvette, all right, Chevy Corvette, <laughs> four on the floor car. She then transferred temporarily to be the commander's secretary. This is where their love story begins, and Liz and Gerald began to date. Eight months from Liz's arrival, Liz and Gerald were married on August 31st, 1974, and their life began as one. Their firstborn, Mary Elizabeth Brown, affectionately nicknamed Angel, came within a year after being married. Also in 1975, Gerald and Liz transferred to, to Laurie, Laurie AFB, 
Denver, Colorado, where they worked together in the base motor pool. Liz separated from the Air Force in April 1976. Not even a day later, she told Gerald, I'm pregnant with our second daughter, Alicia Brown Duckett, who was born 1977. Then in September 1978, their son, Gerald Lewis Brown Jr. was born. In August 1979, Gerald and Liz Brown were reassigned to, I'm gonna say this wrong, Torjan? Torhan, all right, AB Madrid, Spain. This started her love for traveling after four wonderful years in Spain. They were assigned to Andrews AFB, Maryland, where Gerald served and retired after 24 years of service. Liz went on to work multiple jobs in DMV as a mail collection clerk, phone collections for a Maryland finance agency, and she worked for the AFL CIO as an accounts receivable person. She then did substitute teaching at, I'm gonna say this wrong, Surrettsville? All right, y'all heard it, amen. <laughs> High school where Alicia and Lewis attended in which was very impactful in countless students' lives. She also committed her time to Holy Comforter in DC where she poured into those that God brought across her path. Liz joined the Cornerstone Peaceful Bible Baptist Church in March 1996 then a year later was rebaptized and recommitted her life to God, which then she actively taught Sunday school to the kindergarten age children, including her first grandchild, Jacinta. She also sang in the mass choir alongside her oldest angel and served as a deaconess. When CPBBC opened an elementary school, Liz began working as an aftercare teacher and as a full-time lead cook for the students, including her oldest grand, Liz, Miss Peggy, and, other Miss, <laughs> and the other Miss Brown created meals that four-star restaurants could not compete with. Amen. And that's on amen, because I know that for a fact. <laughs> also, thankfully, Jacinta shared her nana to become a nana to all the kids that loved her because she was truly one of a kind. Liz loved family gatherings during which she prepared her favorite foods, including cow pot, which is a Thai dish they got from living abroad, lumpy mashed potatoes, lasagna, corned beef, and cabbage, which came from her Irish roots. Liz was an avid bowler. She bowled a two, 266 as a sub bowler, which was her highest score ever. She went on to receive recognitions, which then turned the whole family into avid bowlers that are still on leagues today. She adored her children, grandchildren, great grandkids, family, all those she encountered, including all her beloved dogs. The Browns' household slogan was, there's always room for one more, as they added to their flock of children. Towards the last few years since their son Lewis passed, she never fully recovered from her son's death. Her health took a turn in which her husband Gerald and immediate family supported her until the very end. But God had other plans to heal her from above with her new healed body and to be reunited with her baby boy. She leaves her dearly beloved Gerald and from this union, three children were born. Gerald Lewis Brown Jr., who preceded her in death, Mary Elizabeth Angel Simmons, Alicia D. Duckett, her sister Celeste Franklin, nieces Tiffany and Shayla, is it Shala? Shayla, okay, Shale, thank you. Franklin, Victoria Walton, grandchildren Jacinta Brown, Jeremiah Walton, Mateo Mathis, Ayana Walton, Morgan Mathis, Alana Simmons, and Gabrielle Brown, Miss Gabby. Bonus grandchildren, Reginald Duckett III, Desmond Duckett, Talita Duckett, Matthew Smith, Michael Smith, Michael Smith, and three great grandchildren, I'm gonna mess this up, Zariah, Josiah, and Rakaya Walton. Thank you, Jesus. Liz also has, <laughs> Liz also has two son-in-loves, Mark Simmons and Dr. Reginald P. Duckett Jr., and one daughter-in-love, Mary Smith Brown. Best friends, Valerie Robinson, Natalie Chambers, Peggy White, Rhonda Richardson, and a big host of family, friends, and God kids. Let me tell y'all something. Aunt Liz lived. And if this obituary did not say enough, read it again. God bless you.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jacinta. I'm the oldest granddaughter. And this is Morgan Mateo, the other grand, and a bonus granddaughter as well. Um, I decided to write a poem on behalf of me and my family. Um, so here we go. In the gentle whispers of the wind, we hear your sweet voice. In the twinkling of the stars, we see your, your spirit rejoice. With every sunrise that graces the sky, we feel your presence every night. You were the rock, the guiding light. In our darkest hours, you made everything bright. Your laughter echoes in the halls of our minds, a melody of joy that forever binds. Though you cross the veil to a world unseen, in our hearts, your love reigns supreme. In every act of kindness, your heart of gold did shine a beacon of love, a treasure divine. You gave selfishly without a thoughtful return, your generosity and warmth, a lesson we all yearn. <laughs> your embrace was like a blanket, comforting and true. In times of need, you knew what just to do. Your heart of gold was a gift beyond compare a legacy of love beyond mere earthly fare. Though you may have left this world behind, your heart of gold forever in our minds. For someone who meant so much, loved by all she knew, you left behind a trail of tears and precious memories too. Heaven knew you were tired, which meant we had to part. Now that it's her special day, their, their angels hear our prayer. Please guard her with your gentle wings and tend to her with great care, for she was someone wonderful, and because we wish she was here once more with us today. We love you, Nana. Fantastic, give her one more hand. That's original, she wrote that herself. And I want to thank the cousin who did the um, uh, announcements and obituary. Didn't she do a great job? Give her a hand. You were entertaining. Every time you came up with something, and I know, what, I know the feeling, man. Sometimes people name stuff, you'd be like, oh, Lord, I should have checked with them before I got up here. <laughs> but she did a fantastic job. God bless you. And at this time, we're going to have uh, expressions and reflections. Now, you obviously have been assigned. Now, don't be saying, oh, I want to say something. No, we, we're not going to have that. The people who the family has assigned to uh, give expressions, we're going to let you say something, all right? I know the Lord just told you to say something, but you're going to have to say it at the repast. <laughs> yeah, you're going to say it at the repast. <laughs> but uh, those who were assigned, is this all just these three guys? Three handsome guys, give them a hand as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. They say this is a celebration of Liz's life. To God be the glory. Amen. I affectionately call Liz Lizzie Kins. She called me Staffy Kins, and we'll talk about that later. But I got the call from Gerald on that day it happened, and I was caught off guard, as we all have. But one thing sticks in my mind, Gerald said, God is good. Now, I tell you, you gotta be grounded in the word of God. When something like this happened, you can still say, God is good. In the midst of the storm, you can still say God is good. In the midst of what's going on in your life, you can still say God is good. That's what you call ground in the word of God. I've known Gerald for 41 years. That's over, over half my life. Him and Liz have been a good friend to meet the Pattersons, and I thank God for the relationship. My, my heart goes out to the Brown family and all the relatives, but I just gave a second to say God is still able to see you through any situation. You keep on living, we all going to be here or there. So, you know, we got to get it right. That's what it's all about. Liz is okay right now. But where are we at in our life right now? When the rubber meet the road, can we hear somebody say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
You've been faithful over a few things. Gerald, my buddy, my ace boom, he, everybody know me and Gerald. Lizzie used to call me short stuff, and I always wondered how she could call me short stuff when she got a daughter shorter than me. I ain't gonna say her name, Alicia. But continue to pray for the Brown family. I'm the adopted family, yes I am. We don't look alike, but that's my adopted big brother. But God bless you. Continue to pray for him. The pastor said, when, the, when all the stuff is done, when everybody's gone, when all the cake is eaten, reach out to the family, give them a hug, see what they're about. My time is up. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'd like to start by saying good morning to all our family and friends, loved ones, and all those that came with their deepest sympathies. Thank you all. My name is Dr. Reginald Duckett, son-in-love of Mom Brown, and husband to her beautiful daughter, Alicia. One letter different than my mother's middle name, which is Olivia. Ma Brown's gift from God to me was her. It was meant to be. Dad Brown opened his arms and opened his door to let me join the family, which changed my life. I would also like to thank Cornerstone Peaceful Bible Baptist Church and the Shepherd's House International Christian Church for their spiritual counseling as they have played an intricate part in the spiritual development of this family. Pastor D., and Pastor S, Pastor Matthews, and First Lady Melissa Matthews. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In my experiences with Ma Brown, I would say that she was accepting of others, loving, compassionate, the peace, the nurturer, and the person that ensured we always celebrated and appreciated holidays with family and friends. If she had the ability, she would take in everyone she interacted with to ensure no one felt lonely or left out. Her motto, as my wife Alicia would tell me, was, we always have room for one more. When I first started dating Alicia, Ma Brown was my biggest supporter, and she took me into her home as if she had raised me since childhood and called me son from one day, from the first day, her and Papa Brown. I never felt like an outsider or new to the family as she loved on me and ensured I ate well and had a hefty plate of her world famous cow pot. You gotta taste that, Alicia can make that also. That cow pot is something else. One thing I would say about mom, she loved the commissary to do her grocery shopping so she could feed everyone. Whenever I got a chance to go to the commissary with her, I had to pack my patience because she did not miss an aisle now, not one aisle. She would say, we just need to get a few things. <laughs> when she finished shopping, a few things became a few carts. <laughs> well, she was honest when she said a few. I just didn't know what a few was. <laughs> we filled the trunk and the back seats with food. My wife and her needed a tractor trailer to get the food back home to pack the freezers and refrigerators at both houses. I quickly learned Alicia has the same behavior. In fact, I'm looking for a commercial refrigerator for the garage as we speak for the family cookouts this year. <laughs> Ma was from Be More Careful, my nickname for Baltimore. So I would also say she was loving and cared for everyone, especially all the kids in the neighborhood. But she would tell you about yourself if you got out of line. Ma was a proud Air Force veteran. Now that's hard for me to say being Army, but I know the Air Force is in the house. <laughs> Woo. Each of you that have spent time with her would sure speak about how she poured the love of the Lord into you and never made you feel like a stranger. In fact, most of you who have met her have called her Ma. Ma and Alicia would talk every day, and Dad, and Angel, <laughs> every day. 
especially when they'd be putting the menu, again, menu together for each holiday. All the kids knew she was coming to the family gathering with Easter baskets, Christmas gifts, candy, and anything she could think of that would make all her babies smile. Mom was love, and love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Love never fails. Ma never failed because God gave her the gift of love. Thank you. Well, that really didn't leave me anything left to say. <laughs> so I'll tell you about the first time I laid eyes on her then. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> God has a plan. And um, I got this boy from Boston, Massachusetts, joined the Air Force, sent me to Lackland for training. Then I went to my first assignment in Texas, then another assignment in Thailand. Finally, this place called Patrick Air Force Base, Florida. Now, I asked the guys around me, where is Patrick Air Force Base? Nobody knew it. I ended up calling the airline, and they told me, well, you got to leave Boston. That's where I was on, uh, that's another story, on vacation. And um, they said, well, Patrick Air Force Base is uh, outside of Melbourne, Florida. You know, so get on a plane, go to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Melbourne. Well, I was there for about six months and uh, got this order that came down that said, well, you're going to have a Edmund Franklin be assigned to your, to your uh, unit. I said, okay. They said, Edmund Elizabeth Franklin. I said, oh. I said, <laughs> All right, well, see, that when, when you come to Patrick, uh, there's one, one flight that comes in around 3.30 in the afternoon. Then um, 4 o'clock, it usually, usually arrives to the base, to the barracks, where the person is assigned. So the female barracks is right next door to mine. So I just got off a little bit earlier so, so I could go meet Emin Franklin, you know, introduce myself. So I went over there, and she got out the taxi, uh, that first leg and then that second leg, I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, my heart stopped. Then the rest of her came out. I said, man, I'm going to be her supervisor? Help me, Lord. So, um, <laughs> so I was just standing outside the, the main door, and uh, she walked up, and I just said, hello, Emma Franklin. And she said, hello. Now, she didn't know who I was, and she told me that later. She said, I was wondering how anybody knew me way down here at the bottom of Florida. So the next day, you know, we got introduced to each other, and I had to get a, you know, process in and all that. So as time went on, this was in December of 73, January of 74, and then in, 70, uh, in February of 74, there was a back, black history program. Now, I played the piano back then. And uh, Liz sang. So we joined the Black History program, and we was practicing and rehearsing, rehearsing, uh, singing every, uh, lift every voice and sing. So one day, we had missed the dining hall. You know, it closed. So I said, well, you know, you want to go get something to eat? She said, yes. I said, well, where do you want to go? I said, I know this place down here. I said, but I only have enough money for me. She said, well, I have a few dollars. We'll go Dutch. So that was our first, our first, uh, <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> can't think right now. So anyway, further on down the line, the, second, the commander secretary retired, and they said, well, we need somebody to take, take uh, the commander secretary place, and we can't get anybody in here fast enough. So uh, there's this new airman down there in the, in the motor pool. Let's see if she can type. So yeah, they just took her away from me and put her up there. God has a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so this is still doing our rehearsal for the, for the Black History Program. So. Um, 
we just kind of start dating. Um, she had three friends, and I had three friends. I had a car. They had a car. So we used to go to this little best restaurant in the city of Melbourne and dance on, on, on Friday nights. And uh, well, one thing led to another, to another, and we decided, you know, we like each other. You're not working for me. I'm no longer your supervisor. Let's get married. You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So, um, well, you know, we, it would have been our 50th anniversary, August the 31st, and I'm still going to celebrate it like she is still here. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. And one last thing I would like to say, and this was mentioned by my son-in-law, um, Dr. Reginald Duckett, and, and that was Liz taught me how to love. Liz taught, God used Liz to teach me how to love because I don't know, we didn't say uh, I love you to each other when I was growing up, you know, but you can hear it every day when we greet each other, whether we're talking on the phone or uh, what. And then she, you know, she just taught me how to love people, how to love how she loved, you know, and uh, it's, it had been a, 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 an amazing journey, let me tell you, you know, I loved it, well, not every minute of it, but most, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, we all had some trials, but. God is good. Give this man a hand. We got to stand up, give this man a standing ovation. Gerald Brown. <laughs> oh, man, that is so awesome. I didn't. The fishing partners, yeah, yeah, tiny. You know, you, all fish, how many fishermen I got out there? How many fishermen I got out there? Now, every fisherman has fish on their phone. So when you talk to them, they say, hey, man, I caught this the other day. I caught this the other day. And so I have my little fish on my little phone. Well, tiny, tiny showed me his fish. His, he had a fish that was longer than him. I told tiny, I'm never showing you my fish again. <laughs> but God bless you. Wasn't that moving? Did anybody enjoy that? I'm going to tell you one thing or another. Now, this time we're going to have a, another musical selection. Here. He needs this? Okay. Oh, catch gotcha. us. All right. He's coming to this time. I'm sorry. Give a hand to Jamon Davis, Minister Jamon Davis. Amen. Can we just give God praise for Sister Liz's life again, amen? It's always a great time to praise the Lord no matter what you're going through. Uh, just a few weeks ago on Good Friday, we had a worship service and it was just a couple of days after Sister Liz's transition and Brother Gerald was there praising the Lord, amen? So he understood Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, amen? only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face is before me. I can only imagine imagine oh to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus or in all of you be still will I stand in your presence to my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able speak it all I can only imagine I can only imagine oh I can only imagine when that day comes I'll find myself standing in the sun Surrounded by your glory, what we 
feel my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence or to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak it all will i surround it by your glory but will my heart sing will i dance for you, Jesus, or will all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to sing it all? I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. Oh, I can only the Lord has done for us. Can y'all help me sing that lift your voice? And now, and now, let the weak say, Somebody open up your mouth. Come on, somebody give the Lord glory. Come on, lift up your voice, Father. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her love. And we thank you that we had an opportunity to experience her. And so we give you praise for all the things you've done for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Man, I tell you, we having a time up in here, ain't we? How many, how many of y'all go to church? How many of y'all go to church? Raise your hand. Now I want to ask you, are we having church or not? I'm just wondering, are we having church or not? <laughs> Amen. Well, I just want you to turn to your Bible, the second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And uh, I'm going to start reading at verse uh, 6, if you have your Bible. But I want to say something, you know, first of all, that uh, I, uh, I knew this, this lady really well. She, uh, she's my friend. And, uh, you know, I've been a pastor 40 years, and... Uh, this is a tough job. Man, let me tell you one thing or another. And it's hard. And, uh, and uh, it's hard being a pastor over uh, black people. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say it, but see, see uh, you know, black pastors catch, catch a whole lot more. They won't say nothing to the white man, you know, they say, but the, but the pastor, black pastor, he, he, he won't question everything he's doing, and he always doing something, I mean. Amen, I've been ruined so many people's lives, and I ain't even never talked to him. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough. But one thing I love about being a black pastor, now one thing though I got, man, I, I, tra I don't care about the other thing. One of the great things about being a black pastor is there's a group of people in your church, right? The best group of people in your church are the cooks. 
Yeah, yeah, if you're a black pastor, see, white pastors, they ain't got this, but a black pastor got people in the church who can cook. And uh, they were the best, because you know, they, they would come to you at church and say, Pastor, I brought you some. And anybody that loved to eat like me, man, my heart would leap. It just compensated for all other foolishness I had to deal with. Because I had some, I had some, and man, they would say, and, and Liz was one of those people. Liz was one of those people that say, hey, Pastor D, I made you something. I said, you did? <laughs> and she used to make me this uh, cream pie. It'd sometimes be blueberry, sometimes be strawberry. But whatever we were, berry it was, it was good. And uh, I'd have to uh, take it home and hide it in the refrigerator in something that they wouldn't know what it was. And because, uh, especially at Danielle, boy, she was like Sherlock Holmes, man. She would say, Daddy, you trying to hide this pie from us. But uh, she, was, she was just such a joy. And I got to uh, thank her for being such a loving, kind person to me personally. And when we started the school, it's so funny, we started that school, I didn't know what I was doing. I just said, we're going to have a school, you know? And I think about that school, how God just sent different people, and Liz was the lead cook. And uh, like you said, other schools be eating, what, pizza burgers. I remember school lunches. Man, them things used to be terrible. And you would be so hungry that you had nothing else to eat, you know? And then if they had spaghetti, they would use the same meat for lasagna the next day. It just tastes like the same. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, them students at Excellence Christian School, man, they was, man, they was cleaning their plate. And a matter of fact, how many people from Excellence Christian School? Raise your hand. All the people from Excellence Christian School, all the people that worked and went there. Yes, sir. And you know, the thing about Liz is she had a heavy hand. Because some people, they you know, put a little bit in there. Liz would dig. Choo. <laughs> she was such a blessing. And, you know, um, I appreciate her work because I really believe they were the people that helped us to get, get going. Uh, she loved kids. She would adopt any children. I mean, anybody that was having kids and they was having a problem, they said, bring them over here, bring them. Next thing you know, the kid was calling it Liz Ma. I don't know whether that offended the real parents, but whatever the case, she was just that way. And then I got to mention the fact that whenever you saw Liz, you saw Gerald. Isn't that right? I mean, when you talk about uh, the great couples in history, when you talk about, you know, the famous legendary couples, you know, you, know, you think about people like uh, Adam and Eve, Romeo, Juliet, Mary and Joseph, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, Abraham, Sarah, Mickey and Minnie, <laughs> Belle and the Beast. Oh, wait a minute. Cliff and Claire. And don't forget Martin and Gina. Man and Martin and Gina. Barbie and Ken. Now, you got to be a little older for this, but peaches and herb. <laughs> peaches and herb. Tarzan and Jane. Lucy and Ricardo. Bonnie and Clyde. And of course, of course, Barack and Michelle. Oh, man, let me tell you one thing. But when you get that list together, you got to add another two names to that list. You got to add, you got to add Gerald and Liz. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you, and they were just two peas in a pod. And uh, I want to commend you, Gerald. I know this has been a rough stretch for you. And uh, you are an inspiration to us all. 
And when you, yeah, yeah, give my hat, give my hand. Give my hand. Because uh, he called me to tell me, and he was, he was upbeat. I was like, well, hold on a second. Now, did you just tell me your wife passed? But, uh, you know, when you did right, When you did right, I mean, you did everything you could, and he did. Amen. And you sacrificed, and you fought. Amen. And you were there every time. As even though she went home, you can rest assured, ain't no reason to cry, because you did everything you could. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. A lot of this grieving at the funeral is because you know you ain't doing right. You ain't talked to them in 10 days. You, you know, they call you. You said you was busy, all that other stuff. And you crying. I love them so much. No, you just guilty. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's a great thing. And I want to commend the whole family. You could all be proud of the fact. If love could have kept her here, she'd still be here. Because you loved her. You stood by her. And you, well, she had everything that she could ever want and need. And. The fact that she gave out so much in her time of need, she got it back from her family. Now, let me get, because I ain't going to be long, because I understand that they have food upstairs. Now, how many of y'all hungry? How many, how many people here are hungry? I mean, well, I just want you to know that we ain't got food for all y'all. So I just want to tell you, you know, if, if you want to go get some food somewhere else, because you because we didn't expect all y'all come up in here to help me to harm and, and you know when we run out of food, we go to Popeye's. You understand that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. No, you stay. We, everybody's welcome. No problem. But, but, you know, I thought about Liz, and I was, you know, I thought about this passage here in, um, in, um, in Timothy, the fourth chapter. And he says, uh, this is Apostle Paul, talk, Paul talking. He said, I, I'm now ready. I'm now ready. He says, now, because it wasn't, I wasn't ready before, but, 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 but I'm ready. I mean, I've gone through the process where I have, uh, I've thought about this a long time. And I've had the opportunity, amen, to think about, think about it. And you know, I, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not fighting it. I'm, I'm not asking God to change it. You know how sometimes, you know, God tells you something, you say, I don't want to do that, Lord. I mean, he said, nah, I've settled it in my mind. And I am at this point, I'm ready. I'm ready to be offered. Offered? Yeah, I'm ready to be offered. In other words, my death is not a tragedy. My death is not something that's forced on me. My death is the result of God having decided that it's time for me to go. Now, Timothy, I know you're worried about me. I know you're concerned about me. But I need you to understand something. This ain't no different from everything else I've been doing. This is another opportunity for me to be a testament yes. to the goodness yes. and the grace of God. Hallelujah. This ain't the ministry. I like preaching. I like to minister other different ways. I mean, I really wish I could get some more of them churches and go back to those places that I... He said, but you know what? God has helped me to understand that this is a sermon right here. Yes. And as I've accepted all the assignments you gave me in the past... I accept this assignment. I'm ready to be offered. And then he says this. He says, for the time of my departure is at hand. I mean, it's time. I mean, some people might want me to stay. Some people might want me to do something else. But it's my time. And then he says this, that which I want to close. I ain't going to be long, I promise you. He says, uh, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. 
and, and henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, also Liz, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, I love the Bible, and you know, I've been a Bible student, and I know my members are going to chuckle when I say this, but 2 Timothy is my favorite Pauline epistle. <laughs> See, that's my members laughing, because I have a new favorite every Sunday, but, but uh, it's the most heartfelt of all his epistles. Paul's going through a real, real tough stretch. The last couple of uh, months have been very hard and taxing on him. The purpose of the letter is to write to Timothy to tell him, come see me, man. Come see me. I want to see you because I've already had my trial. I'm already sentenced to die. And at any time, they'll knock on my door and come get me and I'll be gone. And so I wanted to talk to you, Timothy. I wanted to see you before I go. Bring me my parchments. I want to make sure that I have all my stuff organized. I need you to come quickly, Timothy, because I don't know how soon I'm going to be leaving. But I don't want you to worry about me. I don't want you to get concerned about This is not a sad day because I'm ready. I'm ready to be offered. I have had some time with God, and I know, because I ain't first time I've been in, a, been in no prison, but Lord has let me know, you ain't coming out of this one alive. And so he says, to, he says, Timothy, I need you to come. And then he does something he almost never does. Paul does something that you, it's very rare when you read the Pauline epistles that he ever does this. Paul talks about himself. Paul was always talking about Jesus. He was always talking about the Lord. I mean, he was, when you read the Pauline epistles, this man is obsessed with telling people about Jesus. But in this moment, in this time, he does something uncharacteristic of him. He's taught to talk about himself. And he does something that you don't ever see him do in any you know, other epistles. He judges himself, sits down, and he thinks and assesses his own performance. He, he, he kind of looks and thinks, okay, did I, I'm, I know I'm getting ready to die, but did I do all right? I mean, it's really good when you can judge yourself, not harshly, but learn how to relish in what you have accomplished. I mean, I know you need to get here, there, and the other, but you ought to take time and thank God for how far you come. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you're not perfect. I mean, there's some mistakes you've made. There's some things you wish you had another chance to do, but is anybody grateful? You're grateful for the things you were able to do. I know sometimes, especially as black people, we so worried about getting a big head, we so big worried about having pride that we don't even give ourselves our just due. Because I'm gonna tell you something, we are so concerned about what we didn't do or what we can accomplish, what we have, that we lose sight of the fact that God has been good in the sense that with good integrity, you have done so much good. So he judges himself. He says to himself, he says, you know what, Timothy, don't, don't worry about me. Um, it's been rough. He said, you know what, my first defense, um, nobody came. You know, it's hard being in that prison cell by myself and having nobody to talk to. I mean, Luke came, but he was the only one. Everybody else forsook me. I mean, it was painful for him because he was like, wow. He was expecting at that trial that he was going to see some familiar faces. He was going to see somebody out there. He, he knew he, he was looking forward, you know. 
Because, you know, Paul didn't think of it as a trial. He was thinking of another opportunity to preach. And so when he got out there and he looked around the room, it was heartbreaking. There was not a single person in the room. After all the people he had blessed, all the things he had done, all the people that owed their life to him, they were all afraid to come. And when he got in front of it and they asked for any collaborating witness, anybody that would give a reference, the room was completely silent. He tells, tells Timothy about that. That hurt him to the, to the heart. He said, but I ain't going to lay it to no charge. How many know it was a great thing when you're not bitter? Some of you have had some bad things happen to you, but don't ever be bitter. Whatever they did gets emphasized and does you more damage. Amen. You got to be like Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> let, let me hear you all. He says, when I think about what I've done, there are three things I can say, which I think relate to Liz. He say, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. And he say, I finished my course. When I think about Liz, there are three things all the way to the end was she fought to the end. And you know what else? She kept the faith. And you know what else? She finished her course. Yeah. Oh, thank you. When you clap, say, I preach shorter. I preach shorter when you clap. You know, the three ways you assess someone's life. And I love how in the black church, we celebrate someone's life at their funeral. We don't call it no funeral. We say a home-going celebration. Because there are two times when you should celebrate. You should celebrate when somebody come, and you should celebrate when they go. Amen? Amen. And I mean, when your, how many of you know when your child was born, you carried on? How many fellas carried on? Amen. You carried on, and everybody came over to the house. You was even friendly to the people at work that you don't like. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think about when that Danielle Mangle was born, because, you know, they told us we couldn't have children. And, man, we carried on. And I remember Winston Cheney, he going to come on the radio, because back then everybody would listen to Winston Cheney. he said, the Mangrum baby is on the way. <laughs> And so we, get, we at the hospital, all these people are showing up. We're like, who are y'all? I mean, I mean, the people from the church and the nurses were saying, who, who, is, who is this baby? <laughs> and we just, man, I tell you, we carried on because a child had been born. But, you know, we got to do the same thing when a child of God leaves. As a matter of fact, we ought to celebrate more. Because we can celebrate what they accomplished. We can celebrate all that they did. And most of all, we can celebrate that they are going home. <laughs> Amen? And if there's one thing we can give God praise for is we know without a shadow of a doubt that Liz Brown is in the glory of God, in the presence of God. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building eternal in the heaven. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have have told you so. If this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we have another building. Yeah. Eternal in the heavens. I just thank God, amen, that she was a fighter. Man, let me tell you, like I said, I appreciate her so much. When we were starting that school and we were going through so many things, we could count on Liz Brown. And she ain't missed no days. She was there every day. And she believed and, well, stood by us. And, and she would, and let me tell you something. She had a, um, I'm seeing how I can say this. Um, she had an edge to her. <laughs> 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 
I mean, you, you couldn't, and Gerald, am I talking, I'm telling the truth, you can't push it but so far now. Because she would return fire. <laughs> in a loving way. <laughs> but let me tell you, you know, when you in a foxhole, you battling and you dealing with stuff, man, let me tell you, you wanted to have Liz on your side. And uh, even with the health challenges and all of that, Amen. It was hard for her. Amen. But she did not go down without a fight. She fought. That's what God requires of you, that you fight. You don't always have ideal conditions. Everything and always go on your way. And Lord knows you can't get people. But one thing you got to do is you got to keep on fighting. Do I have a witness out there? People say, well, I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what you do. Just keep swinging. Keep fighting. She fought. Paul said, I went through a lot. But one thing I can say is I fought a good fight. Then he said, you know something else? I kept the faith. I had a lot of reason to get discouraged. I had a lot of reason to quit. I had a lot of reason to be disheartened. Lord knows I have absorbed some punishment. And there were a lot of times, amen, when God did things I didn't expect or I found myself in situations when I was doing the right thing and I was in a whole lot of trouble. Lord knows I didn't understand why God led me this way and I ended up with that. But one thing I will say, even when I was confused, even when I was humiliated, even when I I felt like I didn't have a friend. I thank God one thing I never stopped doing. I never stopped believing. I never stopped trusting. I never stopped seeking. I never stopped calling on the name of the Lord. And so, last but not least, I'm finished. She finished her course. Oh, yes, she did. She finished her course. She completed her assignment. She did it to the end. Was no quit in Liz. Was no giving up in Liz. She did not prematurely throw in the towel, but she fought. She had faith until the end. God bless you, Liz. I, I'm going to see you on the other side. I understand they got food up there. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I never got the, what was it, cow pot? Was that the name of it? I don't know if that sounds too delicious. <laughs> that sounds too close to something else, but I ain't going <laughs> to. <laughs> but Alicia, you can make it. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a couple dollars. I just want to see what that is. But let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this great lady. Thank you for all that she did and all the ways she touched our lives. So many people in here today, they wish they could say something. They can, they can recall an incident. They can think of something she said. They know of things that she did. I mean... You got the record on high, Lord. But I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you for Liz Brown. Thank you for using her to be a blessing to all of us. And then, Lord, I want to pray for this dear family. Lord, bless them. I mean, one of the most wonderful families. Amen. You were ever find on this earth. They stick together. They they love each other. And most of all, one thing I like about them is they like to have fun. Bless them during this time. And then, God, I pray for this man of God. You know, we go way back. He is my friend. He called me. I told him anything I could do, man. Because you've been there for me. Bless him, Lord. Help him in this time. He's, he's putting up a strong face. I mean, he's really looking like he's fine. But, Lord, we know in the midnight hour. Amen. As the pastor mentioned, amen, six months from now, I mean, it's going to be tough for him. 
But God, be near to him. Encourage him. Bless him. Thank you, Lord. For all the people that came today. Thank you for all the things that people said. Man, this has been a great homegoing celebration. We give you all the praise. All the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Well, we're going to ask the undertakers to come at this time. Now, we're not having the, uh, the, the intimate. We're not going to have that today. It's going to come at a, a diff, another time because, well, you know, Shelterham, you got to schedule it. So that'll be another time. And so we are going to have a repast. Yes. Okay, so Georgia said it's Monday at 11.15 at Sheltingham Cemetery, if you want to come uh, for that. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, there is a repast upstairs. Amen. We invite many of you to go ahead to McDonald's. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to judge. I'm just going <laughs> to but because uh, I know we're going right upstairs, man. You can walk and I, you can walk right upstairs, but I know all y'all probably coming up there, man, with y'all appetite. But uh, we're going to join and greet the family and uh, just spend some time celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Let the congregation kindly stand and uh, please allow the family to recede out first. Okay, so stay, stay put for a minute, okay, and let them. Uh, proceed out first, okay? All right. I'll fly away, oh glory. Oh, thing, oh, okay, hold on a second. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Say your thing. Praise the Lord again, family. Family and friends, we just would like to say that uh, on behalf of the Briscoe Tonic Furniture Home and the Brown family, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out, supporting the family today during their time of bereavement. Please know more. Former thanks before coming at a later date. The family would like to thank everyone for your phone calls, your visits, thoughts, prayers, all the wonderful flowers that were sent. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Reverend Mangrum and all clergy and the church families for their encouragement and hope to the family. Family, I hope their words will continue to uplift your heavy hearts during this very difficult time. I also would like to thank all the clergy that participated on the program as well. And I ask you all to continue to keep the family in your thoughts and prayers, the days, the weeks, the months to come, because it was truly needed. And as mentioned, the interment will be a later date, and that's Monday, April the 15th, as mentioned, at 1115 Sheldonham Veterans Cemetery. We would like to have some persons that can assist with the flowers. At this time, we would like to have... Uh, yeah, some missionaries and deaconess. Come up here right now, get yeah, these flowers for us. The flowers. Come on, some of y'all, man. Thank you so much. Come on, the ladies. Come on, ladies, with the deaconess. The de you know, you a missionary. Come on, get help us with these flowers. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, we need a couple more. Come on, y'all. 